Welcome back. That was Joystick off the new album uh, that was Rinse and Repeat. Before that, we had Mast Intruder. Uh, what else? We had Methadones. We had some Banner Pilot, New Jersey's own Vision, and we started things off with Less Than Jake. And we are joined now by Paul from Joystick. Hi, Paul. Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming aboard, man. Thanks uh, for having me. Uh, so... Tell us a little bit about the band, and uh, you, you know, let's talk about the new album. Well, uh, we've been around for twelve or thirteen years, depending on who you ask. You know, uh, <laughs> okay. I don't know. There's not much to say. I guess <laughs> it's our it's our fourth album. Um, okay. Yeah, we haven't really done much in the last year. Uh, because, sure. You know, sure. yeah, no one has. Before, uh, before everything hit, you know, where, where were you guys, were, like, was there momentum? Were you, you know, were the, the shows piling up? Where, where were you before this all, before the zombie apocalypse happened? <laughs> well, we, we released our third album, uh, like, about three and a half years ago. And after that, we just toured, like, in so much. It was crazy for, like, about two years there. And then um, we were, like, let's take let's like chill out for a year let's like take a year back we'll like do a couple little weekend shows but like you know we'll like just relax and like you know have like a nice little break and then so we did that and then we were like gearing back up like let's let's start touring and everything again and then everything shut down yeah. so we ended up having like a two-year break which was not what we wanted you know <laughs> So we uh, we took our time and and uh, we recorded the album over like six or seven months, you know. We okay, which was nice because it it gave us something to do during yeah. the lockdown, you know. So do you feel because you had that much time to you know spend on it? Are you? Is it like really like? Are you really happy with the result? You know. Are yeah, you still going back and second guessing certain things. Yeah, it was cool because um, we we would uh, we actually tracked all the drums before everything shut down. Okay. So so we basically had like the foundation laid out, and so we didn't know how long everything was going to be shut down. We're like, oh, it'll be open back up by June, you know. Yeah. yeah. We like, didn't. We were like, it's okay, we're not going to go back to yeah, two weeks. How long yeah. Two weeks. <laughs> and so then, like after a couple months, we're like, okay, this is gonna be a while. So we would just go spend like three, three hours a week, five hours a week, and we'd just go in like one or two of us at a time, and it it was really relaxing. Usually, it's like super stressful to record. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was, it was nice and relaxing. And is and the entire band in New Orleans, or did you have to do the? Hey, I'll send you my tracks. We'll collab <laughs> on, on online type thing. Well, uh, one one our one of our trombone players lives in Baton Rouge, and which is only an hour away. Right. And then our other trombone player lives in Mississippi, which is only an hour away. Okay, so it's not it's not that bad, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so you weren't you weren't having they weren't have to do their parts in a different studio. Yeah, correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, you know, so you talked about, you know, you guys were, were, you know, spending a lot of time just touring and stuff. Uh, what would, you know, is there a, a spot that you guys, obviously your hometown, I'm sure that you got that locked down, right? <laughs> so, but, you know, outside, like, where, where is, where's Joystick's home? Where, where do you say is, that's your, your place to be, you know? I, I, that's a hard question, because... I I you love almost every yet, time. Have you, guys have, you haven't come east yet, have you? Yeah, yeah, we have. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah we. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, we we toured up all the way up to like Seattle and stuff. Even. Um, okay. Yeah. Or well, no, you said east. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe this coffee hasn't kicked in yet. The other side. <laughs> yeah. yeah Go, the uh, other way. Go the other way. <laughs> Paul, turn left. Your other left. <laughs> yeah, we uh we we went up uh we've been pretty. 
far north. That, I don't know what's farther north. DC. We've we've been to like uh, okay. Brooklyn a couple times. Philly, New York, anything? Yeah, yeah. We've been up in yeah. all, okay. up in there. Cool. all right. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know we're based out of New Jersey, so uh, for us, we get we kind of get a lot of the you know. The, 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 oh, like the, the best of both worlds because we get Philly, we get New York, we get DC, we get Boston. Yeah. You know? So a lot, we get a lot of touring bands through here, obviously. And, um, you know, it's for us, it's just, there's a lot of places to play, you know, so it's cool. Yeah, we, we put, we toured with Kill Lincoln uh, right before, it was like one of the last tours we did and we played Mill, Mill Hill. Mill Hill Basement, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I played there. Yeah. yeah, that place is that awesome. Place is tiny. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Man. Yeah, that, that place is small. So. Yeah, oh, yeah, tiny. We're, 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 yeah. we're a three piece and it's small, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was fun, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's good. It's a good time, man. It's a good place. Be back. Uh, the to, uh, shows. Jump on John's question about the, the New Orleans scene. Mm -hmm. um, do you find it's difficult to? Uh, to promote punk, seeing it's you know it, it's blues, it's it's jazz, that type of thing. Is it tough to get a punk scene yeah, going? Yeah, punk. You know where? What's the uh, well, punk scene? the the punk scene here is insane. It's huge. Oh, really? It's huge, and and um, everyone's so supportive of one another. Like the shows, the there's a huge punk festival that happens here. Well, it didn't last year. Right. It happens here every year where there'll be like hundreds of bands and it, it's fucking crazy. And um, of course, like with the jazz and, and stuff, we, there's a lot of like insanely talented horn players here. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's cool. And it's crazy too, because for a long time, Joystick was the only ska band in Louisiana for like, five or six years there really? so it, which that was cool for us because even though we weren't that good back then uh anytime a band would come through we'd instantly get to open for them so we got to, <laughs> we got to oh, play yeah, with the yeah, cool. band. so that was that was good for us but uh yeah it's it's um it's really cool because the punk guy we have like support from the punk scene and support right. from like so is there is there more ska punk bands now in New Orleans? Yeah, well, now there is, um, there's a band about three or four years ago, this band called The No Show started, and they're super good. Okay. And then um, uh, about a year ago, this band started called Bad Operation, and uh, they're kind of more like, they call themselves New Tone. All so right. they don't really do too much of the punk stuff, but gotcha. definitely a ska band. There, there. Like there's a big ska. I mean, a big punk scene. Like any other, like any notable bands that people should check out. Uh, the Paul Bearers are probably one of my favorite bands. Yeah. Um, it, a lot of the uh, punk bands here don't really leave New Orleans, which is uh, weird. It's, it's more of a local like, scene. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but it's it's crazy, yeah. It's it's really cool. Cool, man. Awesome, yeah. Um, so you know, with this much time to spend on the record, did you guys? I mean, in the, as far as like the writing process goes, was it easier this time because you had so much time to go back and work things out, or was there uh, pressure to just listen? These songs are done. They're ready to go. We're not gonna we're not gonna mess with them. Let's just record them. Well, it's usually me and uh, our bass player, Clay, that write all the songs. And so um, we'll go to the studio and have like 80, 90 percent of the songs done. And then like we'll just have like everybody else add their own little flavor to it, if that makes sense. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yep. So uh, so this time we definitely had way more time to like experiment with like different horn parts and different like backing vocals and vocal like we could just experiment you know because if if we didn't like it there was no hurry you know yeah, you, right you can change your right yeah. well it sounds great i mean you guys got a really great clean sound on the on the album um it's definitely uh to me it has a classic ska punk sound to it in the sense that i think you guys just all the tone, 
tone wise, everything comes out really nice. It just it's it's just well put together. I think clean. it's clean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with um, we've just been together for so long now that we kind of can just feel each other. If that makes sense. Sure, absolutely. Um, and and uh, we went to a new studio this time for this album. Gotcha. And uh, the guy that recorded us, James Witten, he's done stuff for like I Hate God. And uh, he recorded a couple of Streetlight Manifesto albums. Okay. So he kind of knew how to do some of the heavier stuff and he knew how to record brass, which was like super important, you know? Yeah. I think that helped a yeah, lot. Because that's the thing with Scott Pump. Listen, sometimes the two most important parts, you got to get those drums, obviously. You know, that everything starts with the drums. It's the foundation, like I said. And then the horn sound, you know. Yeah, it's for so, sure. You know, so important. So, I feel like that's, like, one of the hardest things that I, is, I can't, I don't know how to do it, but, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not for me. Sometimes you can just hear an album and it just sounds, like, a little bit flat, you know, that there's yeah. it, that, that pop to it, you know. Yeah. yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't have the oomph sometimes, <laughs> you know, it's just... Something's lacking, you know. So, oh, with, with so many members in the band, uh, you know, with such a rich horn section and things like that, um, do you have much uh, changeover? Do you have most of the band intact from the first couple albums, or do you, you know, what I mean? It's got to be hard to keep that many people together uh, from from album to album. Um, it's our first album. We had a different trumpet player and a different sax play player. But after that, the only thing we've done is add members. <laughs> so right. it's been basically the same lineup for about like 10, 10 years or so. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Dude, we, you're, you're, I you're player. like rock status when you go that many years and you don't have, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're We're like, all so it's, it's like, like rem numbers <laughs> we're, we're like a family man we're we're all brothers and we're all so close like i i can't i, I don't know i don't really imagine any things yeah 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 that's good well i mean as long as you guys get along that's all that matters it's, yeah yeah it's very easy because we, we when we were younger we would uh we would drink and party so hard and uh and it it would just not be fights, but man, we would just it, we were rowdy. And so, like once we, we're all like a little bit older now, and like getting married and having kids and sobering up, and it, it's we just have gotten so much closer. It's really it's pretty awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So, uh, anything on the horizon? I mean, I know a lot of festivals and stuff are, are booking up. Or, you know, what do you, are you guys? What are you out there doing? Are you, yeah, we have a we have a couple of things uh, coming up later this year that we can't we can't announce yet, but they're uh, pretty awesome. All right. I can wait to tell somebody, but <laughs> you know how that goes. You have to kind of keep it a sure. A I yeah. tell you, I have to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> there's some there's some good stuff happening later this year. Cool, cool. Yeah. So, um, so the new album is out, um, and it's on. Uh, what do you? Uh, what record company you guys on again? I'm sorry, you on? Uh, yeah, we we're on Stomp on um, this new album. We released it on Stomp and and Bad Time. Okay. Yes. All right. Cool. Awesome. So I also wanted to ask. Um, in doing my research or whatever, uh, I came across an article. They said that um, that Sincerely was was hailed to be one of the better ska punk albums in quite some time. Um, with that kind of accolade, how did you go? To the, did the writing process change for the new album for I Can't Take It Anymore? You know, with, with that type of uh, credibility now, do you change the way you write to kind of stay on the coattails of the last album? Uh, I was actually, that gave me a lot of anxiety and stressed me out a lot because uh, we hadn't, we didn't have a, con we just had like that contract for that one album you know and I was like oh no what's gonna happen but um at least I don't know about clay but at least for me I just I just tried to like write from the heart and especially like lyrically 
man, I, I really tried to push myself to be like out there and, and super honest about stuff. And um, I think it came through. I, I, I think you can hear, I think you can listen to a band. Most people, even if they, it's subconsciously, you can hear when a band is being disingenuine, you know? Uh, and uh, so I just tried to, you know, like be, be true to myself. And, and uh, I don't know, it seemed to work out. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I think that's true because I think there's times where, you know, you do a follow-up album and there's songs on there that are just, you could tell they're just there for filler. Mm -hmm. You know, the heart wasn't into that, to that song. And that's, it's so hard when you have an album that is, is widely, you know, successful or, you know, uh, just the accolades and everything we say, but, you know, it's like your London Calling how do you you know how do you come back after that and not force the issue uh when you're writing you know you're trying to duplicate something that's you know you know it's in a, in a blender <laughs> you want to keep that same success but yeah. you don't want to duplicate that same album just to get those accolades in there. yeah you know but then on the like on the flip side you know you have metallica tried to do something different with saint anger and that blew up in their face, right? So they tried to do something different, but uh, so that's the type of thing you don't want to do. You want to, like you said, stay genuine to your sound, your writing process, but you know, not go too far out of the box. You know? <laughs> yeah, we're we're already been talking about um, what we're gonna do for the next time we record. We're uh, we're thinking about trying to record the rhythm section live, and then oh. You know, maybe record, track everything else. Uh, just that, you know, you, maybe it might blow up in our face. But, you know, I think taking little risks like that, you know, it definitely keeps it from being coming stagnant, even from, like, being on the band side, you know. It, I can't imagine, like, keep releasing songs and albums that are, like, the same. I think it would just get boring, you know. Yeah, I think at some point you have to evolve, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and when you're in one type of musical, no matter what, I don't care what band you are, you're in a musical genre, you're, you're, you're rock, you're punk, you're ska, you're whatever, uh, when, you, when you go too far outside the box, that's, you know, when people just don't understand it, some may appreciate it, but most don't, um, so I think it's, yeah, you kind of kind of stay in the lanes a little bit and color in the lines and you'll, you'll, you'll be okay. But yeah, obviously you guys want to, you don't want to put out the same album all the time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but I'm sure your fans want you, you know, for the most, they, they expect, they expect joystick sound. You know? Yeah. And we're pretty, I, I feel like within those lines, like you were saying, I feel like we, you know, we're not just like one kind, like we do like some heavy stuff, some yeah. really, low stuff, instrumental stuff. So I, I feel like we cover a broad range, you know, which definitely keeps it not so one note, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah, well, and, I, and, I, and that's, I think, for you guys, you know, because you have like that, you know, you guys have, you guys have a very successful formula, I think, in your songs from an outside perspective of it's a mix up you got that punk sound within the song and then you can switch it right back. You can switch the timing back to the stop, back to the little bit of a hardcore sound. And, you know, so you guys mix it up very well, you know, so um, kudos to you guys. <laughs> Thank uh, you. And, and, and to John's point. So when you have such a versatile sound where you can, you know, you have punk, you have ska, you have hardcore, you have jazz, um, for lack of a better term, do you ever get bored of just doing ska punk and like you have a, uh, a spin-off band where you guys record, I don't know, four track EP under a different <laughs> moniker and do, you know, hardcore or something like that? I mean, bands do that. They need a creative outlet, you know? It's funny. We we actually, uh, the rhythm section, we we do have a, uh, we do have a little side band that's just like the most ridiculous. <laughs> it, it's crazy because right before shutdown, that band went on tour and we played up in New Jersey at uh, some other basement place. I, I can't, 
I don't know what it was called, but uh, it's been around for like 20 something years, 30 years or something. Huh. It, it, was, it was pretty grungy in there. <laughs> All right. Well, I got to think about this. Yeah. Yeah. What's the one that, uh, that I talked about uh, or dodgeball played? Uh, I mean, listen, you got Brighton Bar. Yeah. You got... Was it Brighton? No, Brighton's not a basement. I don't oh, know. A legit basement. Oh, that's like a pretty crusty. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, that's, that's what not, I'm saying. No. It sounds like. No, yeah. every, dude, every club around here is crusty. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we don't have a lot. Of, you know, we got Starland, which is the big, uh, you know, the, the real big place, you know, owned by Live Nation and all that. Yeah. And, you know, hmm. that's where all the big bands play, you know. Otherwise, if you're a small band here, you're playing dive bars and, and basement bars and, yeah. It's so, Tony, right? Yeah, and again, that's also you know bigger. Stuff. True. Yeah. But anyway, um, so the um, uh, what do you guys you know as far as like influence? What, where where do you guys you know what do you see as some of the more influential bands for you guys? Well, uh, I grew up, uh, I, I guess, in the early early to mid nineties is when I first started getting into ska. So like I grew up when that whole ska boom, that third wave thing happened, you know, back then when it was yeah. like Boss Tones and you know, all the ska bands were. So that's how I, I grew up on it. And uh, I, I went to all the all those shows throughout the 90s and 2000s. And, and so that I think that's maybe why we have like kind of more of that kind of sound is because that's just what- That's influence, right. Uh, and like uh, I still, to to this day, I like love that stuff, you know. And that's what I listen to. And uh, our drummer is, uh, he's the tour manager for Less Than Jake, so oh, yes. yeah, he he hangs out with those dudes all the time. So right. it's you know it, that I'm sure that rubs off on him, you sure. know. Sure, absolutely, okay. So yeah, I, I just basically as far as I go, I just I write the kind of music of like that I'm a fan of. Right. Okay. So that's more your scene. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's uh, I'm with you because that's that's kind of where I that's where I started too. So yeah, for me, bands like that, Boston's, Lesson Jake, and, uh, Real Big Fish, and all that stuff. That 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 wave. Uh, and I think isn't there a, a book coming out or documentary coming out on the the last we we had some people on oh, yeah. some authors. They have a, a new ska book mm -hmm. coming out. Was it Aaron Aaron Carnes? He has a in defensive ska. No, it's, uh, it's Amy. Yeah, let me see if I can find it real quick. It's uh, I think uh, Mike Wasserman wrote the book, hmm. and it's coming out. Let me see. It's coming out like real soon. Cool, like June possibly. It's about ska or punk? Yeah, no ska. Oh, that is. Yeah, so uh, it is comes out July fourth, and it's called Ska Boom: An American Ska and Reggae mm. the Oral History by by Mark Wasserman. Oh, I didn't even know about that. That's awesome. Yeah, so we had the authors uh, and the people who own the publishing uh, book, uh, the publishing house, were on with us a couple of weeks ago. And they were talking about it. So yeah, this is a uh, this is coming out July fourth. So cool. Yeah, I'll yeah. Look that up. Yeah, I'm definitely kind of. I, I want to see what that's about. That should be cool. You know. So. Can I can I ask a, a a simple question? I'm sure you get asked a lot. Where did the band Joystick's name come from? Are you guys video game nerds, or are you like John, who likes to play with his joystick a lot? <laughs> <laughs> well, both. <laughs> uh, I'm married. You're not. So you know, <laughs> I got to play with it. That's right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we. So we. There's not really any cool story behind it. We had like a list of like three band names, and we were like, okay, "That's it, three? Oh, that's nothing." Because yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, and like we we didn't know. There, I guess there's a band from New Jersey in the in the 90s or early 2000s named Joystick, but I didn't even know about that until like a year ago. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. 
I don't remember. Now, anything. There's, yeah, there's like a there's like a band from now. There's like a band from Argentina named. There's like a couple joysticks now. Right. There's one in Omaha because when I started doing my research, I, I'm like, I started listening to music. I'm like, we're interviewing these guys. They don't sound like us at all. <laughs> so then I asked John. I'm like, what is their homepage? I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> I would have been asking you how how is that the punk rock scene down in Omaha, Nebraska, <laughs> and you would have said, "Hey, asshole, <laughs> that's not us." That's <laughs> funny you brought that up though, because um, we had a show in Omaha, <laughs> and uh, that joystick was playing a show in Om Omaha the same day. Oh, really? Yeah. So there's like two shows going on with. With the and I guess that band too, the other band covers the impression that I get. So a lot of times people will like find that video on YouTube and be oh like, "What's up with these guys? Y'all look way different than you used to." And it's like, <laughs> oh, it's not us. Oh that man, could be some good cross promotion though, right? <laughs> and I reached out to them. I, I messaged them because I was like, "Hey, I know you have a show, but like, you should come." come to our show or like let's meet up or something and uh, they never responded let's fight it out <laughs> you guys can collaborate <laughs> there can only be one <laughs> i'll bring my guys and bring yours we'll meet in the we, got, we got eight dudes so <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> they don't know that <laughs> that's funny oh that's good <laughs> yeah tell you meet in the alley behind the show yeah. <laughs> we gotta settle this once and for all <laughs> maybe that's why they didn't respond <laughs> <laughs> Your joystick's entered one leaves. <laughs> that's good. Oh man, that's, that's great. funny. Guys are playing the same thing. That's, yeah. I, I wonder, like, time. if some people thought that they were going to their show, and some yeah. thought they were going to your show, Maybe. so you have the wrong crowd. This at each is not show. the right band. <laughs> you know? Holy shit, that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> that's like for me. Like, whenever I'm looking for anything uh, for the Doughboys, mm. who are Canadian. Punk, pop, uh, punk, punk band in the 80s and 90s, you know, you look up Doughboys and it's this Americana band that's out now and mm. oh god. I think there's a rap group Doughboys too. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> it, could, it could be, who knows, you know. But anyway. Paul, did you watch um, the Oscars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was your take on the Oscars? Did, what uh, did you wear on the red yeah, carpet? What did you wear? <laughs> who were you wearing? When what I don't even know when that was. <laughs> was it last week? Two weeks ago? I think it's last last Sunday, I think. Was it yeah, last Sunday? It was a week ago, yeah. Uh, I like movies. I, I just said I don't know. There wasn't hasn't really been any good ones coming out because you know <laughs> can't go to movies. COVID. Everything's yeah. on HBO Max. Fucking COVID. Mm. Uh, I take it you were saying you didn't get it. Oh yeah, I, I mean I didn't get it. I I barely like hung out with anyone, you know. But uh, my wife and then like some of the band members, and that's about it. Locked yourself away. Yeah, he did the same thing, and I got it. <laughs> and he got it. Uh, I'm out there gallivanting all around like a freaking young whore. This guy got it, you know. Playing with his joystick. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you got to put a mask on it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so listen. Thank you for coming aboard. We're gonna play more of the album, and you know, you know, in a couple of weeks, and then uh, when you get an opportunity, uh, you know, and you got stuff coming out, let me know. Yeah. Message us. We'll let we'll let people know. You know where they can catch you guys coming up, and the multi festivals that are gonna be <laughs> happening, and uh, you know, forty bands and hundred bands over three days, and all that stuff. You know. That's the way the world's going. I don't think we're gonna, you know, I, I, I don't know if we're gonna get too much. It's Tours. gonna be who's I mean, yeah. it's gonna be so hard to tour because restrictions. Re, because well, not just because of restrictions. Listen, if a club can only have yeah. 20, 30 percent capacity, right, right. you guys can't make your money to get to the next town. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, so it's gonna be very hard for you guys, a small band, a to tour in this climate, if the, the, if it's not back to full capacity and the crowds are not coming, it could be full capacity and crowds still don't come. You know, right. that's the, problem. Yeah. the the bigger bands that play like the the like big big rooms. You know, right. 
like those venue users are are still open you know the clear channel venues and stuff they're still open right and then little small places that are you know the places like house shows and stuff like the small bands can still go on tour and stuff but like the kind of like medium bands like yeah. where we're at they like a lot of those venues just shut down you know right. Like right. no place to play and plus everyone's wanting to tour now so like it's there's too many bands and not enough places not enough places to play. play yeah yeah it's, yeah I, I i don't know what's going to happen man you open up your backyard and and, and and the problem is is again listen no matter how you look at it if you're a touring band it comes down to revenue stream yeah okay even a mid-sized band you have to be able to generate so many dollars to just make it worth going to the next town, all right? You got to feed yourselves. You got to pay for your gas. You mm -hmm. got to pay for your room if you got one or if you're not sleeping on someone's couch, mm -hmm. you know? We And Thank we've you. all done that, you know? That's old school touring that you just get to a town and hopefully someone in the crowd lets you sleep on the floor, <laughs> all right? Or you're sleeping in the, in the, in the back of the van, <laughs> uh, you know, but now with the way it is, I think that's going to make it so much more difficult for, for those small and medium-sized bands to go from, even if you do like a, a three-state, tri-state tour for a week, you know, those, especially those midweek shows are going to be really hard to draw. Yeah. You know, really hard to draw those midweek shows. Yeah. So I, I think this is... The pandemic is going to change music beyond anything we've ever seen before. Well, and, and that's what I've been talking about. I, I've seen a lot of the live streams. Um, Lamb of God, Metallica, Avatar, all these bands. And like you He's said, the metal guy. If you haven't guessed by now, Paul. This is what I got to deal with. Right. But I mean, you know, Satan. <laughs> they're, they're still getting their, their some revenue. I right. know it's not the same thing. You're not tailgating. You're not partying it up or whatever but it's at least something to give the fans to tide them over until you might be able to tour again i know it's not the same but i don't know yeah. I, I still i still enjoy it it's, it's but a big band that has a, a large rider who's you know who's supposed to get freaking 15 20 grand that night okay now we're you know and then they're gonna throw a couple local bands on you know i don't know how it is in new orleans here you basically pay to play. Yeah. When, oh, wow. when a, yeah. When a, when a medium sized band for like punk and hardcore, you know, like uh, my band opened for Agent Orange when mm -hmm. one night we had we had to sell a hundred tickets. Whoa! What we didn't sell, we had to give back to them with the money that would have covered those hundred tickets. So Whoa. we ended up actually paying money. To play, that's crazy. Yeah, so it, it it's like it's here exposure. it's yeah. it, it's it makes it that much more difficult as to be a small band here with that mentality of the club doesn't promote the bands anymore. Mm. Bands are now promoting the club, right? So the, the you go to places to play and they're not providing you with a crowd. You have to get the crowd. Why would I do that? I could just go play in my backyard for free. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, hopefully New Orleans is not like that. No. <laughs> I've never experienced that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's why it's tough to be a local band here. Mm. A lot of places to play, but, well, not as much anymore. But there's that mentality. And that's, yeah, that sucks, you know. Yeah. Huh. yeah. So. Good thing you guys are good down there. So. <laughs> but you don't have to worry about that when you guys come up here. So, you know, but uh, I can't wait. yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see you guys. Uh, hopefully you'll be up here soon enough. So That'd be awesome. Uh, but, you know, just stay in touch. Let us know. Uh, you know, sure. when the time comes and you are up here, let us know. We'll come We'll come grab a beer with you guys and, and hang out. All That'd right. be awesome. Awesome, man. Listen, congratulations. Good luck with the new album. And uh, yeah, let us know uh, when you got anything coming up. All right. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, Good cool. talking to you guys. Nice to meet you. Take care. Thank you. See you.